What's up? It's Tobin, and this series of videos is going to be a little bit different than what I usually do. Uh, this is going to be about teaching young humans about computers and programming. Because right now, I'm teaching young humans about computers and programming. I'm volunteering at my son's school. We're going to get together with a group of just wonderful kids, really the bright kids. Uh, second grade to about fourth or fifth grade-ish. And we're going to talk about computers and make our own computer and program and do lots of really cool stuff. So these videos will be basically each one, there'll be one a week or so. And I'll just review what we talked about in the class. They're not going to be very long because these are young people and they have stuff to do. So uh, we don't keep these too long. And every week I'll record one of these videos. So if you have a if you're a young person that wants to learn about this stuff, or you're part of our, our group that missed a class or wants to go back and review something, or you're an adult that wants to teach their kids more about this kind of stuff, or learn yourself, you'll have it right here. And this was our first day in our first lesson. And today we went over kind of what we're going to do, and a little bit about the history of computers and the parts that make those computers up and how they work. And our activity was to build cases for the computer we're going to build. So, let's get started. Computers are the most wonderful thing in the entire world. You might be thinking that's not true, that maybe puppies are better. Puppies are not better. Computers are the most wonderful thing in the entire world. And it has never been a more exciting time to be a young person learning about computers. In 1969, we took a small group of very brave people and put them on a giant rocket, blasted it into space, off they went to the moon, walked on it, came all the way back. The amount of computing power in your parents' cell phone is more than all the computing power NASA had combined when they put people on the moon. The PlayStation you get today is more powerful than a supercomputer that cost millions of dollars just 15, 20 years ago. We have amazing power at our fingertips. But there's one thing that's been true from the very first computer all the way to the present day, and that's this. Computers are dumb. So dumb. Computers are the dumbest things in the world. Okay, you've got like maybe a family pet or an uncle named Harold you think is really dumb. Computers are dumber than that. They're the dumbest thing you can possibly think of. They literally can't do anything unless somebody tells them exactly what to do and how to do it. And the act of telling a computer what to do and how to do it is called programming. And when you know how to program a computer, there's literally no limit to what you can do. Your only limits will be your imagination and how hard you're willing to work at it. Here's what we're going to do in this in our group. We're going to today learn a little bit about the history of computers and a little bit about the parts that make up a computer. And then going forward, we'll build our own computer from a Raspberry Pi. And we'll learn how to program it. So let's jump right into the history. Uh, before computers, we had lots of mechanical or mechanical slash electrical devices we used to help us do things. Like an abacus, a basic arithmetic machine, goes back over 2,000 years. What sets a computer apart is it's electronic in its general purpose. So you can give it logical instructions and then change those instructions later so it can do different things. The first a uh, real computer, arguably, was the ENIAC. And it came in... ENIAC sounds like something that should be in a cartoon. ENIAC. It came in about 1947, and it used the first computer technology. There are three generations of computer technology. It used a vacuum tube, a lot like this, only probably quite a bit bigger for a power tube. Vacuum tubes works by heating elements on the inside. They are very delicate. They use a ton of electricity. They generate a lot of heat. The ENIAC was about the size of a very big house, about 
1,800 square feet or so. And it had about 18,000 of these vacuum tubes. And running the sucker took about 150 megawatts or much more than, say, the power cost to amount of power to power a house for an entire year. And it could do very little. Uh, but it was the first computer and it was awesome. It was so awesome. But there's not a whole lot. Vacuum tubes had a pretty short life in computing because they use so much power, they're so big, they're so delicate. ENIAC probably only worked about half the time. The next generation was called a transistor. It's the second generation of computing is about transistors. Those are about the size of maybe your pinky thumbnail. Instead of this giant glass vacuum tube, little component size of your pinky thumbnail, they're much faster, much smaller, produced a lot less heat, used a lot less power. That's when computers really started getting interesting. That was in, say, late 40s, early 50s that really got started. Then in, uh, let's see, probably the 60s, early 60s, uh, we got the microchip. And a microchip, you'll see on a computer board, it's like these flat black rectangles and microchip. This microchip, again about the size of a pinky thumbnail, holds about a billion or more transistors. Billion with a B, that's a number with nine zeros after it. And it's, this is the age we're in now, and it puts so much power in that computer that you can do really awesome things with it. Now, we talked about programming. Programming is the art of telling a computer what to do. The very first programmer came before a computer. And that came in the 1800s, and it was Ada King, Countess of Lovelace, or is more popularly known as Ada Lovelace. If you ever want to learn about a really genius person from history, you should check out Ada Lovelace. Brilliant, brilliant woman. She wrote the first algorithms or patterns in a program for something called the analytic machine. It was a mechanical machine. So the first programmer was a woman. And if you go to any group of programmers and look around the room, you'll see there's very few women there. And this is why. No good reason at all. That's why. There's no good reason why there aren't more women in programming. And the group we have has a bunch of really smart young ladies. And I'm so happy you guys are there. It, uh, it's great. Because we need more women in programming. Now, that's a little bit about the history, first programmer. Now, what are the parts that make up a computer? There's four general parts. First, you have to get stuff into the computer. And we call those an input device. And those are things like a mouse, a keyboard, a touch screen, even your voice. You can now speak to your phone. And it will take that as input to do other things with. Second thing apart, that's part of a computer is called memory. A computer needs to be able to remember the stuff it's getting in and putting back out and working with. And we are going to use for a computer we build a little memory card like this. The same kind of memory card you might find in a phone. The third part of a computer is known as the processor. And that does takes all the input and the stuff out of memory and does stuff with it. It does all the number crunching and analytics. The last part, part number four, is known as the output device. You have to get something out of the computer. Those can be like a computer monitor. You can see things on the monitor. It can be a printer, print things out on paper. It could be sounds. It could convey information through, through sound. It can be lots of different things like that. So those are the basic parts of a computer. Now, next week, what we're going to do is we're going to put together a computer out of this. And this is a Raspberry Pi, built especially for teaching young kids how to program. And what's really cool about these is they're very cheap. These are about 40 bucks. And they're extremely low power, so you don't have to worry about people getting shocked. 
and uh, they're just awesome. These are great little things. Our activity for today for the kids was to build a computer case for our little Raspberry Pi. And you can com build a computer case out of anything. We use lots of different stuff today. We use popsicle sticks, we used uh, paper and glue and all kinds of stuff. A lot of people like to make Raspberry Pis out of Legos, like this. Uh, but you can use anything. You could use a bunch of flat rocks you find out in the river. Just dry them off first, because computers and water, they're like this. They don't like each other. Well, that's what we did today. We built a case, and next week we're going to put together our computer and get it working. So, and it's our first class. If you're one of the kids in the class, thanks so much for today. Had a fantastic time. We're going to have so much fun. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.